Australian Government Summer School for Teachers of Mathematics was conducted at the University of New England in January 2008. 200 mathematics teachers from across Australia came to hear high profile presentations and undertake workshops and seminars in contemporary mathematics. Professor Kay Stacey, Professor of Mathematics Education at the University of Melbourne, gave a presentation entitled Teaching Students to Work Mathematically. Kay, I was wondering if you could just tell us what the main themes were of your presentation. I was talking about mathematical thinking, working mathematical and mathematically, and uh, mathematical problem solving. And what I wanted to do was to give participants an experience mm -hmm. of mathematical thinking so that we had some common ground to talk about. I wanted to then talk about how you actually might teach students to work mathematically mm -hmm. and also then to think about some of the things that go wrong in classrooms and go right in classrooms to really encourage um, you know, students deep mathematical thinking. Right. Yes. So how is this relevant to the teaching of contemporary mathematics? Yeah. Well I started off by um, having a look at what the national statements of learning that have been uh, produced by the Australian governments mm -hmm. have uh, how they've described the working mathematically strand in there and all of the states of Australia have some they give a lot of importance right. to the process of math working mathematically although they do it in somewhat different ways also I was able to show um, some documents from Singapore and the United States about mm. how they think about their curriculum and I think you can see that we've got mathematical thinking as a goal of the school curriculum you know, so we want students to be able to solve pro mathematical problems really well, that's one of the important outcomes, but you know, recently I think people know as well that students have to think mathematically yes. and have a high level of challenge and of cognitive demand in their work so that they'll learn well. So it's a really double, double mm. thing as a goal and also a way of learning. Right. Yeah. So what were some of the, the key issues that you were hoping to present to the participants yeah. of the school? So. Uh, we had a look at an interesting problem, the Flash Mind Reader, um, which I think um, is an internet download that all, sort of, all teachers can use. And so one of the things I wanted from that was to just um, highlight some of the uh, fundamental processes in mathematical thinking that um, you know, very, very powerful um, and underlie a lot of mathematical thinking. So we looked at trying examples, then organising that data systematically to get patterns, generalising, checking. So those sort of, we had some experience of solving problems. And then um, the next thing I wanted to do was to say, well, if you're going to teach children to think mathematically, you've got to give them really three things. You've got to give them experience of challenging problems. You've got to make them, help them reflect on it because you know, people don't learn from the experience, right. they learn from the reflection on the experience and that's a really key role for mm, the teacher. Yeah. And then you've got to give them some strategies so that you, you know, the, the sorts of things that we've just been talking about, you know, how to use examples to learn about a problem, how to organise them systematically to find patterns, um, how to find, you know, you know, as well we've got real world problems that we need to think about how we're going to model those. So teaching, uh, so for teaching, experience, reflection and strategies. And then the key that you need to do that is a teacher who can maintain a really high level of cognitive demand in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And so the second part of the talk, well I had a look at um, some research was, which is had a look at how successful a group of teachers on the, the project in the United States were on oh. maintaining that high level demand. Mm -hmm. Right. So how might teachers go back into the classroom and implement some of the ideas that you were suggesting to them? Well, it was interesting that in the study about what uh, features of, t of task implementation maintain that high level demand. So, and I think these are the things that really teachers need to, need to t take back to, them, to, to the classroom themselves. So. Yeah, the tasks were well chosen so that they built on students' knowledge but actually stretched them, yes. you, know, so, yeah. you know, sort of, so not what they know but what they're ready to learn. Um, the teacher gave a lot of scaffolding but they didn't tell them the answers but instead they discussed the mathematical process so that they actually, um, the scaffolding is helping students do it but it's far, f you know, it's actually still maintaining challenge mm -hmm. and I think that's, you know, those sorts of things are very delicate balances in classrooms. Yeah. Um, it was really interesting that you needed the right amount of time. And so in that study we saw that um, 
too much time was very was dangerous, led to quite unsystematic exploration. Mm -hmm. Too little time tended to um, focus just on answers and you know, people had to work through them too fast. So sure. appropriate amount of time planning for what you want to do. And then I think two other really key features that those successful te teachers who successfully kept at a, at a high level were able, they modelled high level performance so the mm -hmm. students in the class knew what they were what a high level performance yes. was expected yeah. to be, do you know that? And the other thing is that those teachers always pushed for explanations and reasoning. So they're not, you know, of course it's in maths, you know, it's, it's good to have the right answer. Yeah, exactly. You don't That's want to really devalue true. that. Mm. But the way you're really going to learn is the explanation sure. and the reasoning. Mm. So I think, um, just to get back to your question, about how teachers would use it in the classroom. Now, I think those are really good guides. Mm -hmm. I think as well as that, what I was hoping is I think that it gives teachers some action research that yes. they can go yeah. back in their classrooms and do in any lesson. You know, we're always trying to keep things at a high level mm -hmm. of, of cognitive demand. And speaking from my own experience, it often goes wrong. Yes. And so having some way of thinking about what goes wrong and actually working perhaps together with their colleagues. Mm. It seemed to me it was something that really could form a basis for classroom discussion. And yeah. Did this lesson work? Mm -hmm. What was it that made yes. it work? Yeah. When it didn't work, which way did it decline? Mm. That mm. research has got three interesting different ways yeah. of, um, of declining. Um, in my teaching I know all of those three quite well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, and how could we stop that happening next time? Yes. So I thought, you know, as a sort of action research yeah. for teachers in the yeah. school, it would also be a good thing. Yeah, so this is it's quite interesting, your presentation and, and the work that you've done here is um, really much more in terms of the teaching process, I guess, for um, the participants here. A lot of the other material they've worked with has been still a teaching process, but using new resources and so forth and bring mm. that in in a different way. Yes. So I think yes. what you're yes. suggesting is, is um, very important and yes. that's that reflection yes. as a professional on, on your mm. uh, own performance and trying to identify mm. how that can be improved and I guess using the students as a sounding board yes. for that is a very important yes. part. Yes. Yeah. I mean I sometimes think of teaching as a form of problem solving, mathematical mm. problem solving in fact, you know, so the same sort of experience reflection and strategies that we need to teach for children, it's also quite useful for as a guide for the, that's yourself right. as yes. well. Yes. Yeah. Now with the, um, the summer school we'll put up the uh, website, yes. there'll be resources yes. available yes. for the teachers there. Are there any other resources or sources of information that uh, teachers could be directed to to investigate these issues? Yes. In the workshop several people asked about um, um, strategies for problem solving and uh, Susie Groves and I have oh, yes. wrote a book which has recently been um, updated and republished by um, Objective Learning Materials, so mm -hmm. strategies for problem solving and then um, I have a, a book that we wrote many years ago, Thinking Mathematically, right. by yes. John Mason, Burton and Stacey and um, then I think I think you'll probably have the uh, references, yes. the papers, yes. Mm -hmm. So I think the um, that paper which talks about the you know, what happened with those tasks in the classroom, I think that could be a quite a good resource for yeah, people. Right. And then of course there's wonderful resources for problems. I mean there are so many good mathematical yes, problems. Yeah. It's hard to single out any That's particular right. one, yeah. but um, we could perhaps put up the link to the yes. Flash Mind Reader and the many Barbie bungees that there are right, yes, right. There on the web. So there's lots of good resources yeah. on the web now. Yes. All right, well, thanks very much for that, Kay. I'm sure that's given people some ideas to think of and to look at implementing in their classroom. Thanks yes. very much for talking to us. It's been a pleasure. Good.